بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين اللهم انفعني بما علمتني وعلمني بما ينفعني وزدني علما إنك العليم الحكيم اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وافت علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم اللهم ارزقني نعمة الإخلاص لوجهك الكريم بكل ما أقول وبكل ما أفعل. My topic today is about short talk about fibrosanthoma or non-ossifying fibroma and also I will talk with it about the fibrous cortical defect. Non-ossifying fibroma is the is most common tumor in children and has been estimated about in 30% of children will have this lesion. About 50% of cases are diagnosed in the first three decades of life and it is discovered incidentally and usually asymptomatic and it is more common in male than in female and less about less than five percent of multiple non ossifying fibroma are associated with neurofibromatosis or Jaffe Cambanasi syndrome with Kefaulet Sports are associated in both of these conditions. Usually begin to heal after the skeletal maturity and healing process walks its away from the area most distal from the growth blade to the growth blade. In rare instances, a neurismal bone cyst can arise from non ossifying fibroma, with a neurismal bone cyst will destroy the bone. What about fibrous cortical defect? Fibrous cortical defect it is histologically the same as non ossifying fibroma, but it is smaller in size, up to one centimeter, that only involves the cortex, as we would see in the coming examples. Here we have a AB view of the leg and we see healed nanosophying fibroma in the proximal tibia and another nanosophying fibroma in the upper fibula and as we see it is intracortical multilocular circumscribed lesion. Most commonly involve the tibial metaphysis and children and adolescents are the most commonly affected. The lesion may also involve the diaphysis with Born growth. Here, another patient with non ossifying fibroma involving distal fibula and healing non ossifying fibroma of the distal tibia, as we see in the anterior posterior view of the distal tibia and fibula 
and this one it is looks like expand cell cortical lytic ossifying fibroma with a distal fibula with some expansion of the bone and this here it is in a stage of healing Here, another patient, child patient with uh, large multi lubulated uh, uh, well circumscribed lesion involving the distal tibia, eccentrically located of the metadiaphysis and it is non-usifying fibroma. And we see the narrow zone of a transition of this tumor. Here, a lesion, it is a small lesion with sclerosis and involve the metadiaphysis of the distal tibia and could be fibrous cortical defect or non-usifying fibroma with multiple liberation. If it is less than two centimeter, it is fibrous cortical defect. If it is more than two centimeter, it is non-osophying fibroma. Here we see a cortical lesion, cortical defect involving the distal femur. And we see here also in the axial CT scan cut, and this is the sagittal cut consistent with uh, fibrous cortical defect. And we see here the sclerosis, also the sclerosis here. Here, an MRI patient with uh, fibrous cortical defect on this coronal proton density. And we see the lesion, it is uh, surrounded with a uh, hypointense area and in the center it is intermediate signal intensity and this is the t2 of the patient and we see the it is hyper intense on the t2 in the center and there is no edema and there is low signal intensity surrounding the lesion fibrous cortical defect. The recapping fibrosanthoma or non osophine fibroma are benign fibro are benign tumor. Benign fibrous cortical defect has the same hostility of the non osophine fibroma, but it is smaller in size. Non ossifying fibroma is not commonly multiple uh, except in patients with uh, neurofibromatosis and patient with Jaffe Gambana C syndrome. Both has the same natural history of healing and both are cortically based and involve the metadiaphysis. Thank you for listening and hoping to see you soon in another talk. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu Allah ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.